In 2013, China announced what is being seen as the project of the century. It's One Belt, One Road initiative, otherwise known as the New Silk Road. Their plan is to connect China with Europe, Africa and Southeast Asia through two routes across land and sea. Since its announcement, it has grabbed many headlines, including speculation about what the true ambitions of this project are. As this is a project that could potentially lead to as much as $8 trillion in investment for infrastructure in 68 countries, or in other words, 65% of the global population and a third of global GDP, this is clearly a project that is important to understand when considering the global economic picture, including how this could potentially be used to reduce the international dependency on the US dollar and bring more control to Asia. In this video, we'll provide a brief overview of the project, the expected outcomes, and what China may be attempting to achieve. This will give you the high level details to assist in your understanding of related economic headlines and future videos where we will refer to specific details of this groundbreaking project. The One Belt, One Road initiative focuses on connectivity and cooperation in three directions. The West, involving West China, Central Asia, the Middle East and Europe. The East, involving Southeast Asia. And the South, involving South Asia and Africa. The priority will be given to Eurasia and Southeast Asia, as the sea routes are expected to be developed later. This is in part due to China's relative disadvantage in building sea routes and potential opposition from other countries. The plan is expected to take 30 to 40 years of development, with the year 2049 being touted as a potential major milestone since this is the 100th anniversary of the People's Republic of China. Although China has not published a comprehensive list of all related projects, possibly so they can remain vague about the plans and include any future projects they desire into it, there are some flagship projects already being discussed. These include a $46 billion China-Pakistan corridor, a 3,000 km high-speed railway connecting China and Singapore, and gas pipelines across Central Asia. As mentioned at the start of the video, according to McKinsey, the total investment could reach as high as $8 trillion for infrastructure. The China Development Bank has already set aside almost $900 billion for over 900 projects and China's big four state-owned banks issued loans last year of $90 billion to the economies related to the initiative, including those in Central Asia and Africa. It's estimated that 50 Chinese state-owned banks have now invested in nearly 2,000 projects, and in fact just today it was reported that the focus has now shifted to European banks and investment firms to tap up funds and expertise. So as we can see, this is an extremely large-scale investment and development project which will be providing a lot of financing to economies that would usually not receive such high levels of foreign money. This can lead to many investment opportunities and shifts in the economic landscape. But why are China willing to do this? Due to their large emphasis on certain industries and government intervention in the economy, China now faces the issue of extreme overcapacity in certain areas. This includes sectors such as steel and coal, and the One Belt, One Road project is an appropriate solution to offsetting some of this overcapacity, as it provides them the opportunity to export their materials, equipment and construction and engineering expertise. In addition to this, the improved connectivity will lead to a major boost in trade across Asia, Europe and Africa, as well as improving the growth in China's underdeveloped provinces thanks to improved transport links. Although China's official position is that there are no political strings attached and that this project should not be seen as a political alliance, there are clearly some geopolitical implications and it's fair to assume the investment in these economies will have conditions of some form. Firstly, China will be using its foreign reserves to finance international infrastructure projects, which will be leading to less of a dependency on the US dollar, something that has been a key theme for a while. It will also give them exposure and potential control over resources from Central Asia, which may be up to 40% of the global total. 
This approach is very different to the one used by the US, which follows a strategy whereby the US will offer security to its allies through its military power and will protect them against threats. However, this approach comes at a high financial cost, which China will be avoiding by becoming closer with allies through physical connectivity, therefore improving China's control and influence over these important regions. As mentioned, these political intentions are not publicly announced, and China has instead chosen the route of being seen as a champion of globalization, something that comes across as clearly opposed with the US's more protectionist approach recently, with Donald Trump's view on international trade agreements, including his withdrawal of the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. While prominent figures such as Mario Draghi publicly suggesting the threats of taking a protectionist approach, this space allows China the room to grow into more of a global superpower. We expect this project will remain in news headlines for the coming months and years. However, it's yet to be seen how this scenario will develop. With this brief overview of the initiative in mind, we'll be making reference to this project in future videos and delving deeper into the economic and investment implications of this huge development. This is obviously a very complex initiative with many possible consequences that warrant a lot more attention and analysis. But for now, if you like this video and want to see more brief overviews on important topics and current events that may affect your analysis, hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.